Hey guys, a bit of a dramatic intro, I know, but I think it fits the context of hitting 150,000 subscribers here on YouTube. It's absolutely crazy. I filmed my 50K Q&A five months ago. Five months ago. That means that we've grown 100,000 subscribers in five months. Tell me that's not absolutely crazy. So as per usual, I put a sticker on my story on my Instagram account, Karma Medic. If you don't follow me, follow me. It'll be somewhere over here on the screen. Go follow me over there for updates about what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis and medical school life and things like that. Now I was checking that story this morning to see the questions that we got and the number of questions you guys sent is insane. Let me show you. There's absolutely no way I'm gonna be able to answer all of these questions. There's just so many here and I'm really sorry if I don't read yours. I promise I'll do my very best to get through as many as possible. Look at that. I wanna be as fair as possible, so I'm gonna start with the questions that were sent in first and work my way up to the questions that were sent in last, and hopefully I answer your question. All right, two quick things before we start. First, smash like on this video and subscribe to my channel to see more content from me in the future. Oh my God, I've become a proper YouTuber, haven't I? And then the second thing, let me address some of the most highly asked questions in my YouTube comments and Instagram DMs so that I can address those here and then answer other questions in the rest of the video. So first of all, my name is Nasser Karma or Nasser Kharma. Yes, I speak fluent Arabic and I am from Jordan. I was born in Vancouver, Canada, and then shortly after moved to Greece where I did my lower school, middle school, and high school. I then did my degree in immunology, microbiology, and biotechnology at the University of Toronto. And now I'm studying medicine at King's College London here in the United Kingdom. And the reason that I'm writing the USMLE Step 1 exam is that I haven't decided where I want to spend the rest of my life working as a doctor, and so I'm writing this exam to keep my options open in case I decide I want to go to the US in the future. And okay, I think that covers probably 80% of the questions that I get on a daily basis. Now let's get into the questions you guys ask me on Instagram. Is medical school worth it, and is there a chance for a social life? By the way, love your vids, thank you. So yes, medical school is absolutely worth it. The first two years of theory-based learning might not be as interesting as the clinical years after that. But once you start clinical placement, you realize everything that you hoped medical school was is actually what it is. And it's just everything you've been looking forward to, talking to patients, trying to learn about their management and their treatment. You know, it's actually so exciting to be able to talk to a patient and ask them any question in the world and they will tell you the answer. They will offer that information to you. It's an absolute privilege and I'm so happy I chose medicine as my career path. I'm applying for med school, but I get faint with blood. Do you get desensitized to this? An anonymous please. Okay. So yeah, absolutely. My uncle is a neonatal cardiothoracic surgeon and when he was younger, he used to faint at the sight of blood all the time. I fainted the first time I saw someone get an epidural injection. And in my first year when we were in the cadaver lab dissecting some of the anatomical specimens, I think we had five students faint and pass out, fall on the floor completely during one day. So yeah, absolutely. Don't take that as a sign that you can't do medicine. Oh, this is a good one. Which pet would you keep? So in Toronto, I had a period of about four or five months where I was living alone and I got so damn bored that I actually bought a goldfish. And I kid you not, I would say good morning to the goldfish every single day. And I would say hi when I came back from a long day of university, it was like having my friend in the apartment. But honestly, fish are kind of difficult to take care of because they require a lot of cleaning and maintenance. So I probably wouldn't get a fish again. If I was gonna get a pet now, it would definitely be a reptile like a lizard or a snake. Cause I just think they're so cool, but I don't have nearly enough space in my room or the time to commit to something like that. What do you think about the new iPad? It's basically the exact same as the old iPad. I see absolutely zero need to buy it and I definitely will not be buying it. Time for a haircut. Ever tried cutting your own hair? Yeah, I know I definitely need a haircut, but with the whole quarantine situation going on, I can't really get one and I'm definitely not cutting my own hair. What makes you want to be a YouTuber? P.S. I'm a huge fan of your daily dose. Thank you so much. YouTube, honestly, I find it's an amazing creative outlet. I've been editing videos for a very long time, way before YouTube, but just having the ability to share my videos with an audience and receive feedback and interact with you guys is just something I've found so amazing. I think it's incredible that I have a platform where I can reach so many other students and the heartwarming messages in my comments and in my Instagram DMs that I get on a daily basis this is honestly what keeps me going. The fact that anyone at all has found any use or value in my videos just honestly makes me over the moon. So when are you gonna do that COD Modern Warfare video? <laughs> soon come, soon come. How do you have a plan for everything in your life? 
Honestly guys, I can't imagine doing just about anything without having a plan. I almost feel like I'm addicted to timekeeping and ensuring that I waste as little time as possible in every single activity that I do. I try and write down everything that I want to do. I allocate specific times and periods to when I need to do things. And whenever I'm working or moving around the house or anything, I'm just trying to save time. I low key feel that I have an obsession with time and time saving, and I'm gonna make a video on that in the future. Who's a YouTuber that you'd like to collab with one day? All right, great question, great question. Eve Cornwell, she is a lawyer working here in London and she makes fantastically edited videos, uses all the right music and dances and everything. I'm really, really enjoying her content. Oh, I forgot about my tea. Okay, here's one in Arabic. Um, yeah, so basically what that means is why don't you translate your videos into Arabic? That's a great question. And now I've actually turned on my community collaborations for subtitles on my videos. So any one of you watching this video right now, I'll put a link in the description down below and you can go and help translate some of my videos to other languages. Question from Frederick. Why didn't you go to med school when you were 18? So straight out of high school, I actually did apply to medical school here in the UK. I applied to King's College London, Imperial, Edinburgh and Cambridge. I got rejected from the first three, but I got an interview at Cambridge and that really didn't go well because I had no idea what I was doing. On top of that, I didn't prepare for the UCAT very well. And so I didn't get a good score there. And none of these things helped me secure an offer. So that's why I went to Canada to do my undergraduate degree. And when I was done with that, I reapplied to medical school and got in. Favorite place to study in London. I'm actually not a big fan of studying in like coffee shops and outdoor areas and things like that. I much prefer libraries and my favorite library to go to at the moment is the Mon Library on the Strand campus of King's College London. And recently I checked out a couple of libraries in UCL, which were also really, really nice. I'll definitely be going back there. How often did you fail an exam in medical school? I've never failed an exam in medical school or university or high school or anything like that. The lowest grade I ever got was in a physics module. I got 55% on one of the midterms, which was absolutely soul crushing, but I ended up finishing the class with an A. Do you think the will settle in two or three months time. Big disclaimer, I'm absolutely no expert. This is just my personal opinion, personal opinion. Actually, very sadly, I really think it won't. I think it's gonna take at least a month before everyone in every single country starts doing very strict stay at home measures. And then after that, I think it's gonna take months of slowly reintroducing the population to going outside, slowly opening shopping areas, and then eventually travel. And even when we do that, we're gonna be monitoring the number of cases. They're gonna start spiking again, left and right. So I really think that we're in this for quite some time. Favorite NBA memory? Bro, are you seriously asking me this? It's obviously the Raptors winning the two. How do you manage things like your girlfriend, YouTube, studying, college? Don't you feel distraction sometimes? Um, yes, obviously I feel distracted and unmotivated just like everybody else. But honestly, how I look at it is that there's certain things that I wanna achieve in life. For example, being a good doctor, getting good grades in university, exercising, having a YouTube channel, having a girlfriend, having friends and a social life, whatever those things are. Those are the most important things in my life and why would I sacrifice any of them? I take each one of those things and I make a schedule for them and I allocate time to them and I plan for how I'm gonna accomplish them. And I just make it a non-negotiable thing in my head that those have to get done. What's your go-to breakfast? Honestly, for the last like four or five years, I've had pretty much the same breakfast every single day, which is two sunny side up eggs on a piece of toast. How many siblings do you have? I have one twin. She is a female and she lives right behind that wall. What's your favorite thing to do to relax? Honestly, for me, I really enjoy spending time with other people. If I spend too much time alone or I don't leave the house, I go absolutely crazy, which is just not good for the current times that we're living in. Other than socializing with friends, I'm a very big fan of video games. I think playing games is a great way to sort of clear your mind and focus on something else, get a little bit of rest and relaxation in your day. On average, how many hours do you study each day? This honestly really varies depending on the time of the year. So for example, now with all this free time that we have and me preparing for the USMLE step one, I'm studying about eight hours a day. However, throughout the year, if it's just like a normal week of attending placement and having a couple of lectures and stuff like that, I'll probably do somewhere between two to three hours a day. What are you currently binge watching? I'm actually re-watching Breaking Bad with my sister because we're currently watching Better Call Saul and those two fit together very well. Have you ever dissected a cadaver in your medical school? If yes, then what was your experience? So yeah, at King's College London, we all are able to dissect a human cadaver. You share a human cadaver with about seven or eight other students. And yeah, it's honestly, it's it's an absolute privilege first and foremost. And second of all, it's, it's just amazing to be able to actually cut into and reveal all the different layers and insides of a real human body. It's something that I think you really need to do with care. You really need to take your time with and you need to 
take in and understand and appreciate the gravity of what it is that you're doing in front of you. This is a real human body that came from a real person and they've decided to donate their body to science. It's an absolutely incredible experience and if you have the chance to attend a medical school where you can do the dissection yourself, I would highly, highly recommend it. This is a good question. Why do you follow your medical lessons online? Okay, so I don't attend any lectures in person and this comes with a huge caveat that is the fact that we have all of our lectures recorded online. So I can watch all my lectures, both video and audio online from my home. When I attended the University of Toronto, this was not an option and I had a 100% attendance rate. And the reason that I did that is because if you didn't go to lecture, there was absolutely nowhere else to get that information. And so it was a non-negotiable fact of life that I had to attend my lectures. Here, however, at King's College London, everything is provided for me online. And so I can take my time when I'm writing my notes and I can pause and I can play back and I can think about what it is that I'm absorbing from the lecture. Whereas when I'm sitting in the class listening to the professor's speak, there's obviously going to be a lag period between them talking and me writing down. And I found that I spend way too much time focusing on writing my notes as opposed to listening and understanding the information that's coming in. When I sit at home on my computer, I can actually do a lot more of that understanding and it's a much more efficient process for me. Which college were you in at U of T and how did you like U of T? Which program were you in? Okay, so I was at New College. I was living in 40 Wilcox. I had one of the rooms overlooking that direct street above the entrance and I was doing a double major in biotechnology and microbiology and a minor in immunology. How did I find the school? Honestly, it is huge. It's absolutely massive. The class sizes of some of the biggest classes in first year is upwards of 2000 students. It's like, it's ridiculously big, which leads to a very big campus with lots of facilities and libraries and activities and things like that, which is all great. However, the program itself, I found very difficult. There is a lot of cutthroat studying and intense work that you have to do in order to keep up at U of T. It's a very difficult school. My go-to coffee order. When I'm out and about, moving around throughout the day, it's definitely a flat white. If I'm sitting down at my desk here or to study in the library, it's just a black Americano. Resources for step one, I just filmed a video about that. So hopefully it's already up on the channel and I'll leave a link in the description down below. If you had to go on holiday anywhere, where would it be? I would honestly really like to go to Asia. I wanna to go to Vietnam, Japan, China, Thailand. I really, really wanna explore those cultures because they're just so different than my culture. And I just want to go and roam around in the jungle and in the busy cities, talk to people there. I would really love to go. <laughs> Let me have that orange dog for a fiver, please. Oh. Thanks for the reminder. How can you deal with stress when it comes to exams? Honestly, about 99% of the time before an exam, I feel almost zero stress, as close to no stress as I possibly can be. And the reason that I feel that way is because I start preparing for the exam early and I do lots of reading, lots of studying, lots of practice questions and everything that I can possibly do to put myself in a good position to do well on that exam. So when it comes to writing the exam, whether I perform well or not, I know that I've done the very best that I can to put myself in the position to perform as best as possible. Okay, so the next question is about clinical placement. Yeah, come in. Hey man, what's up? I just wanted to say, remember to leave a like. Oh yeah, what else? Comment. Comment and? Subscribe. Cool. And don't forget to? Ring that bell. Ah, oh, cool man. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. <laughs> So much of coffee, aren't you resistant to caffeine yet? How does it work for you? Good question. So if you guys watch my channel at all, you'll know that I drink a lot of coffee pretty much throughout the whole day from when I wake up until about 7 p.m. and then I stop before I go to sleep. Now, if I'm absolutely honest with you guys, I do not feel the effects of caffeine at all. I drink coffee because I love the smell and I love the idea of having something in my hand, something to drink during my long studying periods. However, I can easily drink a coffee and go straight to sleep or I can drink coffee at 10 p.m., 11 p.m p.m. if I need to stay up and study and I can go to sleep right after just fine. So I'm pretty sure caffeine has almost no effect on me, but I still drink it because I love the taste and I love the experience of coffee as a whole. Are you going to make any Karma Medic merchandise? You should have a meet and greet in London when this is all over. Yeah, that's actually a really, really good idea. It's something that I was building up towards actually doing now in the summer, but then obviously everything that's happened has happened, but I definitely will when this is all over. Tips for making a YouTube channel. I just made a whole video about how I make videos for YouTube. I'll leave it linked up over here on the page. No, over here. 
somewhere, god damn it, one of these corners. But honestly, my main tip for making videos is you just need to be consistent and produce high quality videos for a long period of time. At the beginning, a lot of people have the same complaints, which is nobody is watching my video, no one's interacting with them. And I know, I know that struggle and that's how it's always gonna be at the beginning. You have to consistently produce good quality content for a period of time and slowly, slowly growth will come. What do you do when you're in a bad mood? That's a good question, but for me, honestly, napping or sleeping fixes pretty much 99% of my mood problems. Whenever I'm in a bad mood or I'm angry or I'm frustrated, I just take a 10 to 20 minute nap and then when I wake up, I feel completely refreshed and I can move on with my day. Do you feel like you neglect yourself sometimes because of medical school? Obviously there's periods of high intensity and high pressure, especially leading up to an exam where you know you drop everything in your life and you just focus on your medical school learning and exams and whatever. But generally speaking, throughout the year, I really place a high emphasis on my own happiness and my own just general well-being. If I don't exercise and go to the gym, if I don't see friends, and if I don't do the things that I actually enjoy, like making these YouTube videos, then I'm not going to be a good doctor. I'm not going to learn my material well, and I'm not gonna enjoy my life while I'm studying. I find it very important to have a balance between my happiness in my life, doing things that I actually enjoy, and also studying for medical school, because there's no point in having one without the other. So yeah, that would be my advice. Just try and incorporate a little bit more me time, personal time, you time, whatever you wanna call it, into to your week. It doesn't have to be something you do every day. And if you're really, really busy, just find somewhere to do something that makes you happy. What's the best bad decision you've made? When I was in university, one of my side hustles was buying and selling very rare limited edition exotic spinners. Like, you know, those things that kids would spin in their hands. So yeah, there were these private Facebook groups that sold very, very expensive versions of those. I ended up buying a spinner for 1,500 Canadian dollars. And I had accumulated that money from buying and selling other spinners in that were like less rare and less exotic and limited. So I took all the money I had made from that side hustle and I bought this one spinner for 1,500 Canadian dollars, which is objectively a bad idea with way too much risk. But thankfully everything worked out and I ended up selling it for over 4,000 Canadian dollars only one week later. Have you thought about possibly starting a podcast? Yes, absolutely. This is one of the things at the top of my wish list of things to do if I had just a little bit more free time I would definitely like to start a podcast and I'm definitely looking into it how many M&Ms are in that jar there are 291 or 292 I don't remember but somebody already won I sent them a letter in the mail they received it they're very happy so yeah, you guys can stop commenting how many M&Ms are in the jar. Do you write journals and do you contemplate life? Um, no to both of those questions, but it's something that I definitely want to improve on. It's actually on my list of New Year's resolutions for 2020. I want to learn to be a more reflective person. I want to think about the decisions that I make and the actions that I do and just sort of take a little bit of time to think about life generally. I find that I'm very, very focused on moving from one activity to the next that I don't take enough time to do things like that. Okay, and I'm actually reaching the top of that list that I scrolled through. Oh, I reached the top. I made it. I actually made it to the very end. I'm happy I did that. I really wanted to get through all of your questions. So I've made it. Okay, that is it. That is enough questions answered for this 150K Q&A. I know I say this every time, but I genuinely cannot believe it that we've reached this milestone. Like 150,000 people is just ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's absolutely insane. It's insane. It's insane. It's insane. You can't even think about putting 150,000 people in one big place. It's, it's, it's a big, big number. And to finish, I just want to say a big thank you, honestly, from the bottom of my heart for continuing to support all of the videos that I put out. Making YouTube videos is something that I really enjoy doing in my spare time. And I love hearing your feedback and your comments and getting all kinds of wonderful messages from you. So please do continue to communicate with me by leaving me comments down below, engaging with these videos by liking and subscribing and all the rest of it. And anyways, guys, I'm going to keep making videos as long as I'm enjoying it. And as long as you're enjoying them and who knows, maybe in a couple months, we'll be at another milestone making another Q and a video. But anyways, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Peace. And last question, just because it's from Rachel, do you like sharks? Yeah, I guess sharks are cool. I don't really differentiate between them. I remember when I was a kid, I really thought hammerhead sharks were cool just because they were flat and I imagined them going like this.